Hey guys, Key from Echo Ceramics, and here's the second half of how to make a one piece litter jar. So, if you watch the first half of throwing the jar, here's the second half of just simply trimming and cutting the lid part of it and putting the finishing touches. Alright, let's get to it. So, first thing you want to do is center it right side up. Once you got that center, I'm going to go ahead and wet the wheel head again. We'll anchor that down using a little bit of anchor clay. And some people like to use ball of clay, but I prefer the long finger pieces of uh, anchors. And generally all you need is three. And this container has a wide base, so it's pretty stable. Otherwise, you could just simply add more. So first thing in order is if you want to trim anything right side up, you can certainly do that as well. So this would be a great time to trim. Maybe even put a couple of designs here. Let's say, for example, we want to put a couple of circular lines in the center. Let's go ahead and do that while we have a center. So if you want to do, do something decorative, we can certainly do that. Otherwise, now we're ready to separate the lid from the base. And in order to do so, you need a sharp knife. So preferably, preferably you have a exacto knife or these inexpensive surgical knives. I'm just putting a couple of little finishing touches on there. So. You have the option to either cut the top portion of it or the bottom. I prefer to cut the bottom because I like to have the galley part of it on the lid. So when you take it off, all you see is just a nice clean line. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the bottom part here. Just keep the exacto knife or the surgical knife nice and even and be patient. And you need to take your left hand and hold the lid and then insert it like you're cutting with a needle tool and more you insert It'll cut, it'll separate, you just make sure you don't lose the lid. Now, if you made this correctly, hopefully you did, and you should have an inverted knob like this. See that knob there? So we're going to go ahead and take that inverted knob and mash it over with our finger. Supporting it from the opposite side, I'm going to mash it over and then remove some of it and compress that down. Why do we want to do that? So that you don't get a compression crack because it's very prone to getting a crack here. So we want to make sure that it doesn't crack when in the glaze firing. Once you have done that, before you do anything, you want to clean the lid. So it's almost ready, except it won't quite fit. So one of the things I want to do is I want to make sure that I bevel this lid and make sure to thin this part and clean that out. In order to do so, you can just simply place it upside down on your own vessel. Unless you made your vessel so shallow that the top portion of it hits the base, then you would have to use a chuck. But otherwise, you can just simply use your bottom half as a chuck and place it over. And this part, don't care yourself to make it 100% center. If you get it about 95% or so, it's perfectly fine. All we want to do is just clean this up. To keep the lid in place, just place your fingers on the center and add a little bit of pressure. I'm using a R2 small trimming loop tool. I'm going to go ahead and just take the top portion and making sure that this portion here is slightly tapered at the top. So I want this to be slightly tapered because when, I, when you put this lid over to the base that it falls in and it gets a tighter fit as it falls, as it drops down, right? And you could leave it square. I always prefer to soften it up and just take the sharp edges away so that it's not prone to chipping. And then if you needed to trim this part here, you can certainly do that. In my case, in this particular case, I don't that's not a, something I need to do, so I'm perfectly content with the way that looks. So here's my lid, right? Thickness is good. If you were worried about the thickness, you could certainly hollow it out from the interior as well. So the lid is fine, so I'm going to put the lid aside. And now I just need to trim the base. So now, before you do anything else, you just want to make sure the lid fits in. In this case, it does not fit. 
So my next step is just simply to make the interior bigger. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a tool, hold it anywhere you like, to what it, use whatever your favorite tools are to just make that bigger. And then you're going to check, and it's not going to fit, and you're going to check again. And then you trim again, and you'll have, probably have to do this way more than you want to. So now it has to fit a little bit, but it's not sitting flush, so I have quite a way, ways to go. I'm going to keep trimming. And check. Fit nicely, but it's still not sitting all the way down, so I need to trim more. Check that again. Ooh, ooh. It's getting there. So I still need to trim more. So be patient. Don't get too carried away. And trim a little at a time and check often. So I'm going to just go ahead and keep trimming, check, and take a look. And it should have a little bit of play. It's a little still ever so slightly too tight. So I'm going to trim a tiny bit more. And my standard rule of thumb for a lid is that when it fits, it should have a little movement. Generally speaking, because of the galley part of it, this part and that part, because of the angle, it generally tend not to shrink as much versus any sort of bowl or vessel shape that has straight wall. It's prone to shrinking a little more. So at the end, I don't want it to be too tight of a fit. So I want to make sure there's a little wiggle room so that I know that this part is going to shrink more than the lid. So... Go ahead and do so. Once you do that, lid fits in. Now my exterior of my base is a little too wide, at least for my taste. And I don't like to have any kind of tuck or little pieces that I could feel the rim of. So I'm gonna trim that down. And can you trim it with the lid on? You can, some people do. I don't particularly love it, so I'm gonna remove it because I don't wanna damage the rim. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then you can see the, it's becoming a little more flush. At the same time, I'm going to trim down to blend a little bit more. And my personal preference is that I actually like to make the base ever so slightly smaller so that the lid slightly hangs over. So I'm switching the trimming tool because the dual tool is just chattering ever so lightly. And again, I like to round the edges of the rim. So I'm going to go ahead and round this off. And the rounding really helps with the glazing aspect of it as well. So a lot of people tend to put the lid on here and then trim it so that you almost don't see the line. If you were to do that, by the time you get to the glazing, unless you want glazing it at all, you're going to have a super difficult time having these two pieces from not fusing together. So you actually do want a gap. Ideally, you want to have like a good eighth of an inch, minimum of one sixteenth of an inch. But having a gap is a good thing, not a bad thing, right? So don't try to hide it. Don't try to mask it. There is a lid. You want to show it. So there you go. Lid, face. I'm going to take a sponge. Sponge ever so lightly on the exterior where I trim. And then go ahead and smooth out or sponge ever so lightly. I'm not going to sponge too much because I got a lot of trimming in there. And I don't want it to stick all over the wall. Now, one thing I need to do is trim the base. So I'll move the lid aside, remove the anchor piece. Shake that out. And still lose pieces in there. And don't try to shake it all out or use a sponge to get that out. Just Leave it in there. When it dries, you can just use a dry brush and dry brush will take it right out when it's dry. If you try to remove it now, you end up having it stick more than anything. So resist the temptation of trying to wiping that down now. Just wait when it's bone dry or even after this, it'll fall right out. So I'll just leave that alone. I'm going to go ahead and trim the base. Center in place. Make sure you sponge the wheel. Get my hands dry. I'm going to make my anchor pieces even a little longer. 
so that I get a nice stable grip. Instead of making it large, it's better to make it longer, right? And I'm putting the emphasis on the wheel, not on the pot itself. If you were to press it against the pot, you're gonna end up denting the rim of your pot, right? So just press down. You don't want your anchors to stick to the vessel, you just want it to stick to the wheel so it holds in place and then while you're trimming. All right. So I often trim from outside in, so I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the outside as well. For the purpose of making this look lighter because it's angle, I mean, because it's wide, not because of the angle, I'm gonna angle it. So because of the overall diameter is the widest part on the base, I wanna go ahead and make the base seem lighter by beveling it so it looks like it's floating. So here's what I mean. So I'm gonna put the actual footing about yay so in between the, I'm gonna hollow that out and that will be my exterior. And then I'm gonna take the tool and place it about 35 degrees angle and then I'll just trim that in an angle so that it bevels. So bottom of my foot is here, but my side foot is angled, so it's gonna, when I plate right side up, it's gonna have a huge gap. And it makes it, in return, it makes it look like it's floating. I'm gonna go ahead and hollow out the center. Hold the tool steady, smooth it out. I'm using the round side, but you can certainly use the square side as well. And then just smooth that trimming part out. If you like trimming lines, nothing wrong with that. You can leave that as well. I'm gonna go ahead and make this foot a little on the thin side. I think it'll look a lot nicer. And to make sure that it's smooth, I'm gonna take the wider tool, and you can use any tool. And again, I'm gonna soften up the foot. I'll just round that off ever so lightly. Take a sponge, sponge it all out. Burnish the foot with your finger, just smooth it all out so that when it's done and you, once it's glazed fire, you can take a sandpaper and sand the foot of it so it doesn't scratch your furniture. So hopefully you can see what I mean by having that little elevation. I'm just swiping away some of the little dry pieces where it's gonna meet with the lid. And here's the tiny little air hole that I had before. To take care of that, just take your finger, add a little water to it, rub it over. If you still see it, use your fingernails to just blend that over and it's gone. And then if you happen to have one on the inside, you can take care of that as well. And there you go. So here's a one piece litter jar that is all made in one. And hopefully, hopefully you guys could see the gap there. So once this is glazed, let's say it's glazed in white or blue, you see a nice shadow. It doesn't look like it's sitting on the table. It looks, actually looks like it's almost floating on the table. All right, hopefully that was helpful. Thanks for watching.